Welcome guys to another episode of Boom Arena. Today we're gonna be playing with the most very classic steel bait because well I slowly run out of the ideas on which decks I can use while not being absolutely hard countered by the Vikings. So I'm gonna be playing steel bait today and unfortunately he's gonna get the better end of this trade today so it looks like he actually got my phone tag very well and I will have to use a rolling skill against this as well so he gets a very good start nothing too big though we definitely can come back and I don't know I he left but whatever we're gonna just take this game and jump to the next one be right back so basically nowadays pretty much every single deck kinda rela has to ask itself one very important question, which is whether you are good against Viking Bridge Swarm or not. And if you are, you are kinda playable and reliable on ladder. And if you're not, well, guess what? You're not gonna be, not be used till the end of the season. And yeah, we're still waiting for the balance patch to come out because, well, it's, pr it's pretty important to vary the meta and not allow one deck to be very dominant and stagnant for the entirety of the game that was actually very surprisingly good phone keg Whew. so yeah we, we kind of want just new meta because we have been playing against viking burston and with viking burston depending on the perspective for a quite a lot of time already and yeah Steelbait was the second most popular option because it has a very good matchup against Viking Bird Spam and not only against that but also against some other decks, especially because of the Phone Hut which is like considered as a consensual uh, best building in the game, however I do not agree with that, like I've said before, I kinda think it's still the Bomb Tower but mm, many people still are uh, scared of being absolutely cheesed by a flying robot and I don't blame them, it's a tricky deck to play against but at the same time it's not that threatening nowadays, so I'm gonna just play here a bomb, uh, ice tiny and hope for this bomb girl to force out something else and there we go, so we're gonna be playing another bomb girl, will absolutely obliterate everything right here, I'm gonna actually try to protect these bomb girls because it would be hilarious <laughs> if both of them will connect and there we go he has to waste a rolling steel and guess what we <laughs> we are back to the another holy cow this game is basically a meme at this point at how much do we protect bomb girls but was it worth it absolutely also we are gonna be playing a variation with missile which isn't being played that often to your surprise because like people are preferring uh, to play things like poison or flying bomb which are yeah they're more solid that but missile kind of fulfills the hole in the many matchups for instance like with poison or flying bomb you will struggle against uh, against cards like um, bl like balloon and uh, Missile kinda fulfills them because Missile single-handedly just uh, gets a good matchup against Balloon. While Poison, for instance, gets it against Cemetery, Flying Bomb, uh, obviously many more. He's gonna get a very nice prediction with Fonz. I believe at this point it is first to say that he kinda was able to recognize my playstyle. I'm gonna play another Fonz Keck. He, he doesn't have Cyclone, but at this point like th there's, n there's no point of changing that. I'm gonna play another bomb girl just for funsies, try to toy with him a bit, let's play a swordsman, phone cake once again, he may be playing phones, there's nothing wrong about that, I think my last phone cake should be in the center just to throw him off, I'm gonna play another bomb girl, I'm gonna play phones, swordsman, he's gonna be actually going in, I'm gonna absolutely defend that and go for the Phone keg, I think he should be able to see that it's centered, but he's still going for the phones, which is which is fine. That was a very cool game to see. Obviously, he was playing apes, and there are some win conditions that will struggle to break through against us, especially the win conditions that are 
many in numbers and apes definitely are many in numbers so bomb girls kind of carried us all the way through first getting damage and then absolutely defending anything that was coming down the lane so yeah that's gonna be a very cool game against apes and it looks like we're gonna actually get that Mazai once again obviously we will be have okay he switched next so it looks like we're gonna be having to recognize his deck once again. He starts with Ghost and Rolling Steel, which pretty much doesn't give us any information right off the bat. Then he plays Piercing Archer and suddenly I can very confidently say that it's a Viking Bridge spam. How do I know that? Simple. Many people surprisingly play it with Rolling Steel, which is, well, strange and weird in a way. But who am I to complain, right? I'm gonna be playing Fonkek. He's gonna have to waste a Rolling Steel, so I will be having a good uh, response in the defense. So, he's gonna be playing Ghost and... Okay, I'm gonna play Fonhat here. Hope to get a kite, and I did. That was the longest kite you can get with the Fonhat, uh, unless you count in the spot uh, anti-EQ. I'm gonna play Ice Tiny here just to make sure that his piercing archer shenanigans won't be as threatening i think i'm right now gonna go for a rolling steel no problemo i'm gonna go now for phones he will have to respond to them and there we go so we're in a pretty stalemate position right now so i think the best way to capitalize of that will be playing bomb girl at the bridge and if he spells my bomb girl i will just send a missile at his tower, so he, I'm gonna just play Fonkek, hope to get some damage, obviously Kanu will help out defending that, but he's playing Crawling Steel anyway, it's not gonna matter, that was a very bad swordsman, I meant to play it well, one tile to the side, and unfortunately we will be losing that here, I'm gonna be playing Fonks here, so I can clean this up, very elegant, and Right now, like I've said, we're just in a very stalemate position, so we may as well just cycle Bomb Girl. I'm gonna be playing Fonkek right when Piercing Archer is about to acro cross the bridge, because then I will be able to play Ice Tiny against it. And right now he used a spell, so I'm gonna just play Missile, and there's absolutely nothing he can do about that. So yeah, he he's gonna obviously go for a Viking, which is a good plan. I'm gonna play... Swordsman here and followed up with Bomb Girl and right now he kind of has to push into us because we've played a very provocative style. I'm gonna right now go for this. I would love these twins to suicide into us. He's gonna even get a very important uh, piercing archer lock but <clears throat> nothing to be worried. We have still everything under control and Surprisingly, this defense was way cleaner than I expected. He plays another flying bomb, which kinda means we can we can have a missile on his tower. That's gonna be a very common theme of this game. And right now he's just going in. I'm gonna kite it with a phones. Twins should be exploding themselves into my Phone hat, I'm gonna play Swordsman, I would love this not to be a lock-on, and unfortunately it, it is not. He's gonna go for a very good, uh, very, go very good flying bomb, I'm gonna just go for a phone kick, go for these ones, I think we're in the good spot because we have the uh, missile at the end of the day, and if he doesn't manage to break us, yeah, we're gonna be having just this advantage, and right now I think this is it. Yeah, I'm gonna just be playing uh, a rolling steel here, I'm gonna kite this here, and unfortunately for him, not for us, he's not gonna be able to catch up with damage, I missed this piercing archer pull, but yeah. We secured the win against, I would say, very strong deck in the meta, because obviously it's Viking Bridge spawn, it's meta defining deck, we had a very decent matchup against that and were able to easily just convert this game. And we're in the game number 4 against Mr. Dark, obviously nice play from both sides, he's gonna be playing general in this one, so we'll see how it will turn out. I'm gonna be playing a phone keg, he's gonna be countering it with a footman keg, so 
So far so good, we're gonna be playing Bomb Girl, he's also be playing the Drunker variation, so that's gonna be a bit tough for us, but at the same time I'm not fearing it that much, I'm gonna waste his tiny here, he's gonna get a very good bomb though, so that's gonna be a bit scary, and he's gonna get a free hits here, I don't think it was a good for him, because right now I can just play Bomb Girl, and even though it forces a Super Devil, it's pretty much everything we want and more and right now we are just in a very comfortable situation because he is not threatening any push out and we are back to the swordsman in the cycle so uh, unless you you're not familiar with matchup swordsman is pretty much the uh, very good damage output card that oh 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 now i see the issue so uh, swordsman is a very good damage output card that he pretty much cannot take out with spells so it's pretty much the damage guaranteed we get, and that's why I'm gonna be playing it uh, right off the bat. Right now I'm gonna just go here, he's gonna go for the footman crack, and right now, okay, that I underestimated that defense, but this is gonna be scary, and he's gonna actually take the upper hand, so I shouldn't be that comfortable because it's gonna be actually a very hard matchup for two reasons. Uh, first of all, he realizes he has to be very aggressive, and... That's the good approach against Steel Bait. And second of all, uh, second of all, he's gonna be having Fire Tiny, which is pretty much a hard counter to a phone kick. So I'm gonna be playing phones right now for some bad response. And actually, we get a bad response, so we're gonna play a some phones. I'm gonna play Swordsman, and I'm gonna play a Bomb Girl on the opposite side. And Right now, I kinda hope uh, that, yeah, he's gonna play Flying Bomb here, uh, that's a good news for us. I'm gonna play actually a Ice Tiny here, so I can just uh, try to apply some pressure. I, th I think playing Missile will be a mistake, but at the same time, I'm, I'm in desperate need for damage, so I don't know, maybe that wasn't a good call, I'm gonna right now just... For this general, hopefully delete it as soon as possible. He's gonna go for a bomb on the bomb girl, which I, I don't hate, but at the same time, well, uh, he, he doesn't get any damage here. So I think we have lost this game because obviously, holy hell, he has a far time against against our keg, which which, which gonna suck like straight up. We kind of got outplayed in single mana, and I don't think I can ever get back into this match, he even gets a prediction can very nicely played by him and yeah, I think that seals the deal because yeah, I, I think we were dead anyway, but at least uh, we could have tried if that wasn't the case, he's gonna play this one and right now he has two generals on the board, that was the situation I was kinda scared about and right now I think there's absolutely nothing we can do Except like trying to prolong the game for no reason. Yeah, GG's gets called and yeah, that's how you beat the steel bait actually. General is very good, but yeah, you pretty much won't see general in this meta because everyone is running Viking and like running general into Viking is pretty much suicide. So very bizarre choice from Mr. Dark and he actually <laughs> he actually gets a win against me. Very cool to see that General isn't actually that archetype. Let's hop to the last game of the video. And we're in the last game of the video. We're gonna be still playing Steel Bait because I have no plans of changing decks. Mid recording. Obviously, I could have gotten Mr. Dark once again. Him playing good General Drunker would be a very inconvenient thing for me. But at the same time, I'm not scared, I think I would be actually down for a rematch, because even though it's atrociously bad matchup, there are tricks, and obviously, if I if I knew the deck beforehand, I would obviously manage my hand a bit differently. So I'm gonna play like this right now. Uh, major difference was that I kinda expected him to uh, have a heal tiny, and with heal tiny, actually... Uh, you play a di bit differently with a general, uh, the bomb girl dies, uh, uh, than with a fire tiny. Like with fire tiny, he actually played very well. He was very on my face and uh, and was doing everything uh, to me. Uh, 
uh, so I can like make mistakes and with heal tiny uh, you actually want to just uh, get more value with your troops so yeah that, that was very cool to see that he actually executed okay th this guy is just giving up so I'm gonna just finish him and actually for the video's sake I'm gonna repeat this fifth game because, because why not and now back to the final game of the video once again very anticlimactic but uh, this will the disc my opponent will be going with twins and footman cake I mean fun cake uh, footman cake is this yeah uh, this short range that kind of is replacing it for rolling steel wh wh whatever as you probably can see I'm a bit tired and I don't even know what I did to be tired but I am tired so I'm gonna just try to win this game and wrap up my video because uh, yeah my, my opponent is already kinda getting into my nerves because this is very not standard deck and is absolutely not something you want to see when you're tired so I'm gonna just play bomb girl and get like infinite value out of her because it is pretty much what this card does if your opponent doesn't get rid of her she will get infinite value and there it is I forced out another uncomfy response and right now okay I'm, I'm gonna actually play a bomb girl I, I wanted to play rolling steel but uh, then uh, it would have been like this very annoying thing that uh, what do I defend the uh, keg with but yeah right now I have rolling steel everything's fine and my opponent will be using Dark Knights. Okay, so big cards has been revealed. Have revealed rather. <coughs> and my opponent plays a Funkek. Hoping to bypass anything inside. I'm gonna actually try to sacrifice a bomb girl for a Viking activation, but the Dark Knight doesn't have enough HP, so it won't be the case here. I'm gonna to counter these twins, and after that, I think we're gonna be just chilling. So I'm gonna just play phone cake here. Nothing to be worried. I usually play the phone cake in this spot to avoid like being my guitar being activated by the cyclone. So very cool spot to learn. If you want to have like more safe uh, games, you can basically kinda also mind gain your opponent uh, into thinking that you will be going for this spot for the rest of the game and then you like change it once and your opponent doesn't react properly and you will get all of the damage in the world so that's also a gimmick that you can adopt into your gameplay if you like it uh, I certainly like it my opponent will be going for the twins so I'm gonna try to counter them like this hate to say that actually twins will connect that was a very unfortunate scenario and I actually don't have that much damage I have bomb girls but I don't have that that much damage so I'm gonna play swordsman here I'm gonna play phone cake here and I actually kind of have to start uh, liquidating my uh, theoretical advantage in bomb girls into a practical dam uh, advantage which is uh, tower damage and right now okay my, my bomb girl was stuck here I'm not sure why but yeah it's it's not a uh, it's not anymore, so I'm gonna just play phone cake. As far as I know, he doesn't have a best response against a phone cake, so I should be absolutely chilling right now. He's gonna be going for the twins, which is well, a fair point, but at the same time, I don't think it was the best one, especially not with the timing. His forces were completely disorientated. Disoriented. I'm going okay. This archer will actually lock to my tower, so if I wasn't having the missile, this could have been a bit scary. But fortunately I did, so we're gonna just send a good game, and that's gonna be the very... very calm and collected closing to a video right here from the Steel Bait. I think it's a very decent deck because it counters Viking Birds from but all in all it's the deck that you probably know how to play so you might as well just try it out on ladder. So yeah, that's gonna be it from me in today's episode. If you aren't already, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to see more Boom Arena content in the near future. I upload every single day, so you definitely don't want to miss out on my content. And yeah, 
Thanks for watching, make sure to subscribe, and I'm gonna see you guys in the next episode of Boomerina.